Oh yeah, baby. Welcome back to another incredible podcast. The crossover with yours truly, Joe R. Lucas is back. And so far this season, it has been awesome. And believe me, it's only going to get better. So I'm going through a list of players and coaches and legends with my main guy, Pablo Ramirez over at your league. And the next, the name of our next guest comes up and I immediately said, hell no. I hated this guy for eight years of my career. And there's no way I'm gonna sit down and talk to him for an hour and have a conversation. But you know what, then I thought about it and I said, let bygones be bygones and get all those bad memories out of him beating me up on the court and raising trophies right in front of me and all that other good stuff. A guy that played for 25 years of professional basketball. And right now he's really beat us up a little bit on the podcast. It's welcome to Daryl Middleton to this edition of the crossover. My man, how are hey, you, brother? Hey, I'm happy to be I'm happy to be here, man. Happy to be talking to you, man. You know, we never really get to talk and sit down and chat or nothing. Always I know. Get, only on the court just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're gonna get oh we're gonna get into that. Don't worry, man. Oh hey, hey, hey. I hope Come I didn't on, I, I hope I didn't offend you too much in the, in that intro, but you know that like it, whenever I do an interview these days. Everybody asks me, who is the best defender you ever played against? And my, my, I have two answers and they go together. My first answer is my idea of a good defender was the fact that I just played a bad game, man, nothing to do with the defense. <laughs> and then I said, Daryl Middleton. <laughs> it's you, always, crazy? <laughs> you know, I used, to, I used to hate playing against you. Hey, you know, you know, I'm, I'm like a joke. Remember that you don't remember this. But I remember the first. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I remember the first time I came to Spain to play, and they played. You know, they used to play this game in September, like the newcomers against the old comers, whatever. Right, right, right. And I remember this game. I came and I played, and I played good. And I don't think you. I don't know you had a great game. And I'm not gonna say nothing. But anyway, we was in the locker room after the game, and you said, uh, "Oh, now we're gonna really start playing. Now we're gonna really, now the season starts." And that stuck in my mind forever, man. I said, I'm, "Every game I play this guy, I will play tough against him." <laughs> Every game, man. Every game. Yeah. Oh, you but it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good playing against you, man. It was I a great you. battle. It was a great battle. I, I mean, when you get to the level where we were at, it, you know, every day is a challenge. But when you find someone that steps it up even another notch and makes you a better player, that was what – that's what I felt you did to me. Yes, 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 for sure. Hey, it seemed, like I said, like I, I always tell the play the same way in practice. Yeah. You play tough against your, your, your players in practice, they, it helps them in the game. It makes the game much easier. You know, the, so that's the, what it was. You know, this this whole podcast is about more of a life story. We're gonna try to like condense yours as much as we can because you've been around about as long as I have. A little bit, a little bit. You know, you and I share the same <laughs> birthday almost. I'm July 20th. I didn't know you were July oh, 21st. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But unfortunately, I got a year. I got one year on you, and you got 14 more years on me playing the game. <laughs> Yo, you you were brought up in Queens and in 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 NYC, baby, New York City. I was an upstate guy, Rochester, New York. Okay. What, what was it like coming up in, 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 in the city and playing ball, man? There's it just so much, it's just so crazy. People don't understand yeah. it, that, that, that never lived it, never been around it. Well, number one, see, I started playing at a late age. I started playing at 15. That's very late in, in New York. Yeah, it is. I was very, yeah, I was very shy and I didn't understand how people can play in front of the crowds. You know how the parks was in New York. Man, You know, I'm the screaming, you. people cursing and yelling. You know, it's, it was embarrassing. I never understood how. And then finally, my coach came, grabbed me one day in 15 and brought me to the gym. Uh, they were having practice. And uh, from that day, he said, this is future. And then mm -hmm. I started playing. And in three years, my, my whole career changed. I, started, I was like the best player in New York City. <laughs> it was crazy. Unbelievable. <laughs> And that was, but you were, you were doing it the right way. You were going through high school. You were getting recruited yes. by colleges. You weren't in yes, the playground. Yes. I mean, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you visit a couple of playgrounds at Rutgers tournament and all that. No, yes, 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 yes. I played in all the parks after my, uh, after I started playing, I started loving the game. I felt comfortable out there playing. And then hey, I started playing all those Rucker parks, uh, the cage. Uh, it was in uh city, 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 uh, city, uh, city college it was a very right. big, big tournament type of, also, and uh, it was great. It was great. And then so college, wait, you, you know? you're telling me that up until 15, you were too shy to get in front of a crowd and and to play this game. Um, I I don't think anybody could really realize until you see and I've seen it 
up front is is what those crowds are like. It's not only a crowded game. I mean, if you get dunked on or you know you, I mean, you're embarrassed. I mean, yes, you're you're <laughs> you're, yes. you're verbally, physically, mentally destroyed yeah, by the yes, crowd, yes. by the players. Exactly. I remember, I remember histories of guys like Ed Booger Smith, Joe the Destroyer, Ham Hammond. You know, all these guys that set these incredible tur the tournament records at Rucker and. and I've been played with one of them, you know. I mean, you know Lloyd Sweepy, you know Lloyd yeah, Daniels. Yeah, 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 yeah. He played. He played what a couple of years in Europe, one year, two yeah, years. Yeah, he played like one that. year with me. Well, he played about a half a season with me before he. We'll get that's another. That's for another podcast. Too, but, <laughs> but I guess my question is: is like so many of these players had were being pursued by NBA teams. They were being pursued by colleges, and they all fell to drug addiction. Man, they all fell to whether drugs or stealing. Or they just went the wrong way. I had a, a podcast, one of my podcasts with Ali Muhammad, or as we know him, Bobby Dixon. You know his life story about going through drugs. How how difficult was it for you to to see? Because I mean, every play, every player on that court that you played with was doing some sort of drugs. You ain't, I mean, there's no way there's no way around it. Oh, for sure. But for me, it was it was different because I had a father. If he was if I if I even came in the house smelling like cigarette, he would have killed me. Yeah. So I, so for me, I kind of stayed away from the drug scene. <laughs> no way. There was no way. But yeah, you're right. A lot of these superstars they disappear. Uh, yeah. I don't know how, but it, I guess it is from the parents, uh, the people you hang with. So pretty much the people who I was around when I was growing and playing was good people. Mm -hmm. uh, people who was there and and lead my way to to playing in in high school and in college. I'd always been around good people, you know, guys that 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 paved the way for me, you know. My brother also, so it was it was. Oh, it just depends on the people that you hang around. You know? Yeah, I think that's so. I think that's so important. I think the first thing you said to me was, I had a bunch of friends that played with, and they were all you know doing drugs and doing their thing. That you know they didn't take a sport as seriously as I did, and and I, I saw how easy it was to go down that road. But having that father figure at home. Um, that's something like, you know, in the, in the Bobby Dixon interview, I, you know, he didn't have that. And a lot of people don't have that. But that's what kept me straight. That's what kept me away from doing drugs. That's what kept me away from that part of the, the, the cause it's such a big part of the basketball game, man. It, it, when you're growing up in a city. Yes, yes, yes. That's what it was for me. It was for that being scared to get in trouble. So yeah. it was either play basketball or that's it. So I just tried to to stick with basketball. I, I, I did everything on my own. I, I copied plays. I went to the park on my own. Every, every, it was unbelievable how in those three years from 15 to 18, I, I just grew. I don't know how. Yeah. I just loved the game and worked hard. You, you still look back. You're kind of like me. I don't know how it happened either. It just happened. <laughs> it yes, just, exactly. You, yes, got, yes. you got kids too, right? You got how many? You got a couple of I daughters? I got four girls. Yeah, four, four girls. girls. Yeah. It, it, that, that attitude as a parent, um, it's something that I've always argued with. I've discussed with a lot of people. I've argued with maybe some other people, but that that the respect is it respect or fear that you had for your father was it is a fine line for me between respect and fear because if I would have came back and smelled like drugs, my father would have beat my ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so I was definitely afraid of that. But while I was out there doing it, I was like, damn, I respect my father too much, and I don't want to disappoint. <laughs> what, what's the what's the the the, the balance? No, it was more fear than, than it was uh, fear. It was yeah, it was more fear, you know. I just wanted to just just to be a just to play basketball and just just to get out, just to leave right. leave New York City, and I did. I went to Texas and Baylor, and uh, that was my key. I wanted to play basketball no matter what, just to leave. How's a New York? That's my next question. How's a New York City kid growing up all of a sudden get out to Texas? You know, we're so much different than the people over there. Yes, yes. Everybody asked me that same question. Why you go to Baylor? You left Texas. Uh, no, it was it was something fast. Uh, like I guess I wanted to leave the city. I wanted to get away because I wanted to go somewhere where nobody comes to my games and watch me. Pretty much, I wanted to grow, be by myself. Uh, you know, it was well, tough to leave my to leave my brother and my 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 mother back in New York. But uh, they came to visit me sometimes whenever they could. They came to the game, but it was tough. But did you had you had the Big East in your backyard, and back then the Big East was you know St. Yes. John's, Georgetown, yes, John's. Syracuse. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. I mean, any kid that grew up in New York, I was dying to play in that league. I was dying to yes. play the Big East. And you got up and you went to Baylor. Yes. <laughs> I went to Baylor. I took a trip to Baylor and I fell in love with it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I went there with uh, with this guy named Benny Johnson, brother, Eric Johnson. Right. He was another guy from New York. And uh, we went there together. And it was I, I, I would do it all over again. He it was played, a great Eric four play, years. Eric played in Spain for a while, didn't he? He played in Valencia. Yes, he played in Valencia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he played yeah. with me one year in Girona. 
He played with me one year in Girona. Okay. He was just like Vinny, too. Right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just like yes, him. yes. So. so after four years of Baylor, you get drafted. You went 68th, I think? Yeah. To the Hawks? Yeah, 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 yeah. To the Hawks, even, yes. Damn it, you even beat me there. I think I was drafted like 72nd, yes. man. But <laughs> hey, hey, but that was back in the days when it was like 37 rounds. So we had to get Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. What, what 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 went out in Atlanta? What because I know no, nah, I knew I was going. I, I knew I was. It was very difficult to make the team. You know, right. it was a tough. So I went to, I went to Turkey and played in Turkey, and mm -hmm. uh, my first experience was crazy. I have never seen anything like a kid from New York going to Turkey. That's, Come that's, on, man! I mean, imagine in 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 eighty eight. It's not like it is now. Hey. I know. No, they don't get it. They they don't get no. it. I always tell these guys, you guys are so blessed, man. You have no clue. <laughs> they're not blessed. They're, they're not blessed. They're spoiled. <laughs> exactly. You you can talk to your family. You can talk to your friends. You can see them on FaceTime. You can hey. do all this stuff. It, it, for me to call Didn't my exist. mom, for me to call my mom, it cost me a month a month's paycheck, man. Yes. Back yes. in the day. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. My, my first trip was a concerto, man. It was the same thing. I was just like. What is this? Where have they sent me? And I and I was lucky enough to make Sacramento. But I, I said I guess I should say unlucky enough because <laughs> I had that taste of the NBA. You know where we were traveling, yeah, and we were yeah, yeah, we were yeah, staying yeah. in hotel suites by ourselves. And I get the cassette. The man, I'm like, what is this? I'll never play this game again. I'm done. <laughs> did you did you feel like it was that you were gonna make it after that first trip? Yes. You know what? I didn't care really. I just wanted to play basketball. Right. That's what I didn't. I didn't care about the NBA. I went a couple of times in the in the summer to the camps, and but in my back of my mind, I said I, I'd always can go back to Europe and play. Right. So I use I use that that those camps just to stay in shape, pretty much. The the the, the Turkey thing. Did you know where Turkey was when you? No, when you, no, no, never. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I remember when the guy came to the team. I was playing in some uh, tournament in New York City. And the coach came after the game, started talking to me and my brother about this. And he was like, Turkey? I said, Turkey? The only thing I know about Turkey is turkey sandwiches. It's, I don't know nothing the, about Turkey. I didn't know it existed. You know, in the States, you don't think about it. You don't, nobody talks about Europe, you know? Yeah. It was just New York. You were just in that bubble, you know? Yeah. The States. That's yeah. how people are today, really. They're in that little bubble. They don't think about Europe. They don't know nothing, anything about the about Europe. Isn't it? So crazy? I've never been afraid to admit it. Like years, like well, you know, when my agent called me up and said, "The only reason why I knew about Italy was my mom was Italian, but I had no idea where the hell it was." <laughs> you know, I was like, "Oh yeah, I could go. I could go to my mom's country, I guess." But you know, where is it? And they're like, "You know that boot?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I know the boot, but where is it?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's just funny, man. It's funny, but yeah, uh, that's what happened. I just went to Turkey, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through this real quick because. Between my guys here that you already met here that do all the some of the research for me and all my stuff, you played twenty five years in yeah. five, five different countries, eleven <laughs> different teams, five separate stints with Girona, a small city outside of Barcelona. If anybody doesn't know where that is, like yeah. I I retired in two thousand. I was sick of practicing. I was sick of traveling. I was sick of the coaches, the bullshit that goes with the game, and you know, other than playing. Went back to the States for 10 years, always wanting to come back to live in Spain. So I got back here finally in 2010. And all of a sudden I'm looking up and I'm doing my work. So I'm, and I'm like, now I got 10 years to make up that I've been gone. And I'm looking at teams rosters and I'm trying to study up teams. And I'm like, that is, that's gotta be Daryl Middleton's son, right? That can't be him. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, there's no way this guy's still playing. You were in Girona, I think, in yes. 2010. Yeah, 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 I was in Girona, yeah. Now I was talking to my son about this. He's and he said to me, he said, Dad, ask him this question for me. He must have not practiced very hard or played very hard if he could last that long. <laughs> Come on, man. Now, you, that? All, you can ask all my coaches. I love to practice. Two hours, two hours a day. I, hey, I love to compete. I loved it, man. To beat up on people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know that. I loved it, man. You know, you can ask Mark Garcia how much I beat him up every day. So I, it, that's was, how it was brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> You know, but I loved it. I loved it. But but here's the thing, and this is what I'm talking about. It, it, when you were in Girona with Gasol, you were 40 years old. And yes. he, he was what, 21? 20, 21? He was young. He probably was like 21, 22. Yeah. Yeah. He yes. had, I mean, he's got to have a love-hate relationship with you. Yes, exactly what it is. <laughs> For sure. For sure. He I mean, kicked the ball many times up in practice, got mad, walked away. 
He was, hey, but we were friends. He respected what I was doing afterwards. When he went to the NBA, he understood that's yeah. what it took to be tough. You know, you have to play tough, you know, he, and he knew it. You know, you, some days he come in the morning, don't want to practice. Hey, D, take it easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you, uh, but I loved you, it. You didn't have that gear, did you? You didn't have to take it easy gear, did you? No, 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 no. That just made me want to get strong and made me practice harder <laughs> against him. <laughs> <laughs> what well, what was I mean I mean obviously we know Mark now but when he was young I mean do you feel like you were kind of mentoring him too at the same time other than just showing him you know how to play the game but were you mentoring him in other things too? Yes, good. Before before I played against him a lot of time. He was in Barcelona and uh, he was real he was real big and slow and and uh, so when he came to Girona I was like yeah this guy him I'm gonna work with this kid. You know, so that was my job to, to to get him ready, to get him tough. And it happened two years. He was like the best player in Europe. Yeah. Then he went to went to the NBA. So he, he, was, I, kind, I, he was kind of fat too, wasn't yes, he? Yes, yes, yes. He was a little yes, chubby yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, he, he worked hard. I'm telling you, he, he deserved it. I told him, I'd say, hey, you deserve what you got, man. But in two years, I had to put up with me for those two years. <laughs> it was worth it, man. So I'm, <laughs> I was happy. For, he, was, he was like my son. I was happy for him, man, you know? That's awesome, man. You know, we'll talk about relationships and stuff later, but I'm going back to the, the unfortunate time. I don't know if it was at 95 or 96, man. We were we were in the finals together. Oh, yeah, I was in Barcelona. Yeah, 94, 95, you're right. Yeah, 94, 95, I think it was. And and and, and there's you won never... the Euroleague that year, didn't you? Did you win yeah. the Euroleague in yeah, Madrid, I, right? Yeah. yeah, I think we won the Euroleague that year. And, and there's never a team in Spain in the history that lost with home court advantage. <laughs> in, in in the history of Spain, so we're down. I remember we're down two to one to you guys, and we had we lost a game three at the Palau, and and I, and we win game four somehow, and it was, I think we won on a Sunday or something like that. We had like four days in between before the, the the final game, and I called my family, man. I brought my brothers, my sisters, I brought all my people out, man, to come celebrate with us when we win game five. And man, you, you you took a lot of money from me that day, man. <laughs> hey, you know, you still owe me that. You you bet me too, man. I don't forget things. You owe me a bet. You say, hey, we'll win this this uh, tournament, the finals. Uh, they, they paid the other guy a dinner. You owe me a dinner too. I don't. I, I, I remember. Owe... I remember, man. Are you serious? I bet, <laughs> I bet you, you a, bet dinner? a dinner. That's right. I don't forget things, man. Damn, I'm still waiting you. for that dinner too, man. I'm telling you, what my dinner. Well, you, I mean, you forgot how to press the link to get into this damn, get into this damn chat that I was waiting for <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, man. Next time, next time you in Madrid, when you guys, you guys got to play, be playing here soon, right? You haven't played here yet. I think maybe year, right? in March. I think we come yeah. here in March. So. Well, the night before, you call me up. I'm buying you dinner, man. All right, all right, brother. Yeah, that, if, if, if I made that bet, if you tell me I made that bet. So, like I said, in 2000, man, it was it was over for me. I was just I was just tired of it. I was just I couldn't do it anymore. I I picked up. I got booted out of Madrid on a bad deal. Went to Ike, played a season in Athens, and, and so on and so on. And like I said, I came back, man, and and I look in the year 2000 when I gave up. You went and got an MVP award that year. Yes, <laughs> yeah, in Jerome, yes. And then That's right after that, I went to I went to Panathinaikos. Right, I, I mean. And, and, there's nothing wrong with a 34 year old player getting an MVP no. award in ACB. I mean, it's 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 not a big thing, but to me, it's just like, you know, I I compare you. I mean, I don't compare you and me together, but I compare our career together to that one point. I'm like, I was so sick of basketball, man. How'd you? Not only did you mentally keep up with it, but as a reward for getting the MVP, you got to spend the next five years with Zelko Brodovich as your coach. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. I wasn't to tell you the truth when I I wasn't tired. I, I I was tired of not winning something big. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. so that's why I went there. I wanted to win a a, Europe, a a title, something big. You know, I had everything in Girona. I had the, the MVPs and all that. But I wanted something else. You know, for all the work that I was doing. So I, I, I got. How important is that to, to to players, man, to win that that because you, obviously you get some fame, you get some money along the way, but I mean. I think what you're saying is you just work for it so hard and you need it. Exactly. For all the work that I did the summer that I, that I worked all, I worked, I worked very hard in the summertime and uh, all that just paid off, man, by, by going there and getting that title. I was so, hey, I was so happy because all the times I, that's what I wanted. That's I wanted so bad. You yeah, know? but you, you won a couple, you won a couple titles in, in, in Barcelona, the ACB titles. You, Yes, but this, you is, this is different. Yeah, yeah, this is something different. This is this is like you know a European title. This is great. I need. I have to win something. I want to win this. 
Tell me about Zelko, man. Tell me about Zelko. Oh, great the, guy, man. What were the first couple yeah. months like, though, playing for him, man? No, it was, it was good. He's tough, you know. He's a tough coach, but off the court, he's a, he's a normal guy. That's what players that's what people, that's what players like, a normal, a tough coach, but you can be able to talk to him off right. the court, you know, and have dinner with him, and explain you about your life, blah, blah, blah. And uh, and when he signed me, I, I, I was like, I'm going through the wall for this guy. And that's what I did every day in practice. They can tell you, hey, I was every day there in practice trying to, you know, some of those guys hated me because I was always dunking and Zelko would get mad at those guys for not dunking because here I am 35 years old dunking in the warm-ups. <laughs> I can hear him. I can hear him, man. Those guys were so pissed at me, man. But hey, but I loved it, man. I was like, hey, this, I'm here for I'm here for one thing only. I'm here to win this Europe, this this Euro League, man. I have to win it. And uh, hey, and he loved me. I, I know they appreciate all the work I did over there. Sure. I, I love that guy so much, man. I, I love that guy so yeah. much. We're we're good friends now, and and every time I see him, when I hug him, I hug him because we're friends. But I also hug him because I, I feel like I owe so much of of who I was as a player and who I who I became as a person to him. Because, like you said, he, he man, he he was tough on me, man, and I was I was tough back to him. I was one of those guys that had a lot of character, you know, and. I didn't oh, shut, okay. I, yeah, I didn't shut my mouth too much. So him and I would go at it now and then. But we had we had some great great moments together. And and, and I, man, I just like I said, playing for him was rough, man. It was like you know we had Clifford Luik at first, and he was just like this real laid back like players coach. You know what I mean? Oh, you guys want tomorrow off? That's fine. That one going with Zelko. <laughs> no, 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 no. I used to. I remember we used to have days off. I used to tell Dimitri, "Hey, I don't want a day. I just practice because I know the day off was like a punishment." And we come the next day and we running like 40 minutes just running. So I hated it, man. I said, no, 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 no day off, please. This is practice. No, just to just to avoid day. I hated day off, man. I didn't want to yeah. day off. Yeah, Zelko didn't, Zelko didn't give me any days off. I'm I'm shocked that all the days he gives off nowadays because of the schedule and oh, everything else. But times so, change, man. Times yeah. change, man. <laughs> That's all I can say. I, I don't even want to. We, 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 you and I shouldn't get in there because we were playing forty minutes a game, and we were still playing three games a week. Thank you. And I, <laughs> and, that's what I try to explain to these guys. I'm like, tired? Uh, no, oh, oh, tell dude, me. How you get tired? <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Never, man. Never, man. And I, I always mean, explain to them about the preseason, these roglas and these mountains running. And yeah. They have no clue, no they, idea what these things are like. They don't do that anymore either. No, nah, man. No, 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 no. They don't do that, man. But I think it wasn't, I think these, those five years when I was running in, in Rogla and Yugoslavia, I think it wasn't a matter of staying in shape. I think it's a, it makes you tough. It makes you tough, man. You have yeah. to be tough. If you're not tough, you ain't making it. <laughs> well, yeah. And, 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 you know, and I think that's, that's part of it, I guess. But, but I mean, you also think that like, I don't understand how these guys, the, the technology is so much better. The medical knowledge and the doctors are so much better. All the courts are the same, no matter where you play. You and I were playing yeah. on cement and half the league Thank in the you. ACB. <laughs> yeah. The balls were the balls were terrible. The baskets were cold. The gyms were cold. The baskets were terrible. And now they got everything, including yes. in, including charter flights, yo. Crazy, huh? <laughs> but I tell you what's the best way to that's the best way to travel. <laughs> best way to travel. Especially it's, for it's us. Like, we so far away. Best way right. to travel, man. You know, for the players, is great for the players, man. So you you desired this European this European title enough to go to Panathinaikos and, and and go, I guess go search for it, go look for it in yeah. in another country. First year you don't win it. Yes. What what was that like? Uh, and, it was tough because they, they had just won it, right? They had won it the year before. Yeah, yeah they won it in Athens, yes, yes, in yes. two thousand, and then you yeah. show up and they lose it. What yeah. what was that like for you? Uh, it was a, it was tough. <laughs> I just said, well, next year I'm a, I'm just gonna try again, work hard in the summer and try and try to get it. <laughs> where, where is, where's the damn attitude of yours come from, man? It's just like, well, whatever, just keep on working, keep on working. Is it? Is yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it was it, tough. I, I also had a very tough trainer in the summertime for like 20 years, man. He was, he was like a military guy. I'm telling you, we used to work from eight to two. It was crazy how much I, I worked in the summer, man. And that, yeah, and that's what kept you in such good shape over the years. Yeah, yeah. That several that those three months that you're up, two months. I always tell people that's very important. Those those two three yeah. months, man. You know, and I did it from Monday to Friday. I didn't care. You can. I tell the guy you can party. It does, it's summer is okay, but right. you need to you need to stay in shape, work on your game. You know, that's it. You know. So you, again, I'm, I'm I keep going back to the same thing. I, I'm at 
I spent 2000 to 2010 back in Charleston, South Carolina, man. It was probably some of the most difficult times of my life, man. It was, I was dealing with retirement from the game, um, from a game that I loved, obviously dealing with difficulties in my life, as far as like divorce was concerned, you know, ex-athlete, you know, the separations from my kids and, and so forth and so on. And I look back, man, I still see you killing it and winning championships, you know? It, it, it's it's still, it, it constantly amazes me, but you play for so long, what's your body feel like nowadays? Because my body's sore, man. I don't, I mean, I know I made you get up and down a, a few minutes ago to close the curtains and turn some lights <laughs> off, but 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 no. it takes me a long time. You're still moving like pretty nimble. No, no, my body, I feel good. I still work out maybe three, four times a week, man. I have no mm. problem, man. No, no aches, no pains, you know? So I'm good, <laughs> you know? But it's pretty good. You're making me hate you more, D. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm gonna give you that. I'm not sure I'm gonna buy you that dinner now. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Hey, but you know, all 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 through the, the the my 12, 13 years, you're 25 years. It, it's all about relationships, man. You build so many different relationships. You build so many different friendships, and and you developed one while you were in in Panathinaikos, not only with Selko, obviously, but with an assistant coach there and Demetrius Atudis. Yes. Well, what, what what was he like as an assistant to you? And it's hard to develop a relationship with coaches, you know. And, and I mean, I have a relationship with coaches afterwards, but I didn't really have them during. What what was Demetrius like with you? No, I mean, I clicked. I, I love Demetrius as well. You know, he was he. Every time I had a, had a problem, something if I need somebody to talk to, he he was like pretty much a friend. I right. mean, he was my coach. I respected him a lot. You know, he respected me, but I was like more. You know, I, I, like a brother too. He was like my, my like, a, like a mentor. I loved the guy. You know, that's how we we stayed in touch after I left and and uh, went on some trip with his family. We was tight. We were real tight, very tight. Me and Demetrius, you know. And I, and I and I was very happy when he gave me this opportunity to come here. You know, it was a, a dream to come here to play with him to to, to coach do you, with him. Do you think he 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 spent too much time on the bench with Zelko? Because I mean, he was ready to go at any time. Yes, I used to always tell him that when I was playing there, when I left. I said, man, why you don't go somewhere? And uh, I would tell him he can go to the NBA to be a coach. He, he has, he's a very smart. He's very smart. He knows, yeah. he knows, he knows basketball, you know. So I was like, man, for sure you can do something else, man. And it's, but no, he, he stayed and it all worked out in the end, you know. His time came. Yeah. So now he got, you know, so everything worked out for him. So he'll be okay now. Yeah. Man, I, I just think he's he's such a class act, man. Every time that I've had any type of interaction with him, whether it's been during a game, uh, before a game, after a game, or just, you know, in, in the hotel lobby, whatever, the guy's just, the guy's just classy. I mean, there's no other yes. way to say it. He's just classy. Yes, yes. yes. He's, he's, he picked up a lot of stuff from, from, from uh, Zelko. He's, he can be tough. He's tough too. <laughs> you know, is, he, is, is he? I mean, I, yes. I, he can, he can change in a second, like all the rest of you, you know, but uh, he's tough, but uh, it's tough enough. He's, he, and all the players, I think, respect him for that, you know? Because another guy you can talk to off the court, right. you know? So that's important for players, to be able to talk to your coach. I, I think that's the most important thing. I know, I mean, you played so many teams. I played with a few. Along the way, you find coaches that, that are tough on you, but then they're not, they're, you don't feel like they're good people outside of the, those four Yeah, you can't lines. talk to them outside. Yes, that's true. There's, yes, you're right. <laughs> I had a few of those coaches that you just couldn't, just don't feel that, you know, you can talk to them outside, off the court, you know? Yeah, and, and, but because the difference between playing – like that is is you're given you, you know you're you you you're working hard for yourself you know when you get that type of type of coach but when you got a guy like Zelko or, or Demetrius that you're telling me about it's like you start working for both of you you know you, you it's more of a man this guy's going to treat me right no matter what I do right or wrong you know and, and walking off the court and being able to talk to somebody it makes a whole difference for you as a yeah. player yeah, 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 it works. Yeah, you when he's screaming at you in the games, and you want to, you know, but you, you understand, you know, <laughs> you know. So it's 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 good, you know. Like I said, from uh, I think all this happened from uh, when I first started. I always had tough coaches, mm. coaches of high school from college was crazy. Right, I think of course, prepared me for what I was going to face in Europe. <laughs> you know, who, who who was your coach at Baylor? Gene Iba. Okay, yeah, yeah. he was. They're tough. nuts. They're nuts in college, man. Yeah, they're nuts. You know? <laughs> and he was he was nuts, man. And uh, I think all this all these coaches I had that was nuts. I think it prepared me for what I was about to face, you know. Mm -hmm. And it helped me, you know. 
So you went <clears throat> after that. You were about nine seasons still playing after you left Panathinaikos. Was was yes. was there ever a moment in your head where you, I mean, was there a moment where you talked to Demetrius and he said, "Hey, man, when I get my own job, I'm going to bring you on." Or was there a moment where you thought you were going to become a coach? Was that ever an option for you? Because I know you got you opened up a restaurant in Alicante. You spent most of your time down in Benidorm, Alicante. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't thinking about it. I was. Just thinking about the restaurant, going to go and do my cooking thing. And uh, then he called me that summer. I think I wanted to come to join him here in, on his, in Moscow. So I said, mm -hmm. yes, okay. And I just left, you know. <laughs> I didn't even thought of it. I just jumped on the plane. And, and what about, and, are you are you some kind of chef or something? You know how to cook? Yes, yes. I know how yeah. to cook. Man, come on, man. I'm well, I mean, I'm, I mean, I know how to cook too, but I don't know how to cook <clears> enough <throat> to open up a restaurant and, and, and worry about nah, cooking. I, I, yes. I thought you just opened up a restaurant and that was it. No, no, no. I was there like seven in the morning. <laughs> From seven in the morning, I was cooking all day. It was like three of us there. So, but I loved it. It was, hey, no complaints. I loved it, man. If you, you were playing at the same time. Yes. Yeah, but it was tough. But at the end, I told them I couldn't, I couldn't do both, man. It was doing the restaurant and playing. It was difficult. So I just forget about it. <laughs> so the restaurant, yeah. I got a place in Alicante. Now the restaurant doesn't exist anymore. No, 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 no. 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 It's, for, for a restaurant, you have to be there. You to run a restaurant, you, yeah, you can't trust people. People are. Right. Like, I was gonna, I was gonna say you don't, you don't have to be there if you, if, if you, if you want to be robbed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, no. But yeah. it was good. It was good. So, so he calls you up, and and you didn't really think about coaching, and and I mean, I mean, what makes you, what makes you go? Is because it, it was friend? him. If because it was him, you know, because it, it, I think it was good to go with somebody that 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 knew you, that understands you, that that trusts you. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I hear I hear a lot of stuff about coaches, assistant coaches brings somebody and they can, you know, kind of be stab you in the back, try to steal your job and all this. It's yeah. like stuff I never heard before as a player. You know, so I hear some of this stuff sometimes when I'm talking to people. And I think it's important to have people that you trust with you, especially right. in, in coaching, you know, everybody that, you know, that's there, not going to talk behind your back. So it, it helps. You mm -hmm. know, we had these, we have we got a great, we got a great staff. Man. These guys are great. So everything's yeah. good. I had a conversation with um, with Yanis uh, Sferopoulos from Maccabi, yeah. um, and and he he talked about his so much time as an assistant coach, and and I mean you're what you five years now as an assistant, seven seven years. He he mentioned I always thought that like sometimes especially here in Spain you see it where people get labeled as assistant coaches. You know what I mean? They're labeled yeah, assistant yeah, yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he said a lot of times it has to do with the fact that assistant coaches are just comfortable being assistant coaches and they don't want to move up. They're just happy with that job. What is it for you? I mean, do you have ambitions to, to, to move on? Are you happy where you're at? Uh, yes, for sure. Maybe, maybe. I asked you, I maybe. asked you two questions. You can't answer both of them. Yes. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you never know, man. It's, it's, it would be great to be a, a coach somewhere, a head coach somewhere, you know, but it's tough. It's a tough job, man. I see you. He meets what he goes through. It's 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 very hard. I don't know how players can can leave basketball and become a coach. I I, I just never understood. It's it's very difficult to do that. I mean, some, players, in some sort of in in some ways you did it. It's tough. No, it's it's a lot of things that that uh that you don't know as a player. Man. It's it's another it's a business. It's another another side of the story, man. But uh, it's tough to to do that. But uh, I think I, I I've been around to to see so many things that I can be a, a good head coach somewhere. You know? mm -hmm. What about it. what about your like you know obviously we try to get you like right before Christmas time and then we had the snowstorm in Madrid. I had to postpone <laughs> on it. And uh and you know you became we kind of both became tough to to finally meet up and get this conversation done. But what's your as an assistant coach to Demetrius, what's your day to day like, man? What I mean tell me what what your job is, and it says, I know you were signed to help with the big men, but I'm sure that's not all you do. No, we we, we analyze the games, the teams that we play against. You watch mm -hmm. a lot of videos. Uh, Sometimes you after the game, you analyze things that people don't think about, like uh, how many points the other player scores on you. Understand? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a big key. You can score 20, but the other guy, but the other guy scores 40. <laughs> that doesn't help, you know? Yeah, well, I always, I always thought I won when that happened. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't work like that, man. You know, yeah, you don't think about it, but after a while, you're like, yeah, that's true. You know, it's it's crazy. 
I always think about it. I used to tell the rest of the guys on the team, if I scored 35 and mine scored seven, I said, it's up to y'all to stop somebody, man. Thank you. Well, that's how it is, man. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like I said, but it's good, man. It's, I, I love it, man. It's, I'm, it's a different, it's different. Something that I was, I, it, I, trust me, I, I learned a lot. I thought I knew basketball, right. but no. But when I came in, it just opened my eyes right, to a whole new, whole new world. You know? what, what what kind of things does a, does an ex player learn? Because I mean, you know, when you're playing all the time, and you you pretty much think you know everything, don't you? While you're playing, yeah, yes, <laughs> no, the tactics. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of X and O's, man. It's so many things, man. That you know how to how to stop the other players, the system, the other team. How you do this? How you do? It's 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 so much. It's it's so many things. It's a lot of things, man. What about the what about the pressure? You, you know, especially up in Cheska, you guys got a lot of pressure. But all that, I mean, I'm thinking like 95 percent of that pressure is on top of Demetrius. It's not on top of the assistants, although you guys have to feel it too because you're part of a team. Oh yes, for sure, for sure, there's a lot of pressure here, and uh, we feel it because we feel it when he feels it. You know, so we 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 you, you can sense it. When he, you know, you can sense something's going on. You know, that's like so you know. Is that like is that like the dad waking up in a bad mood in the morning? Yes, <laughs> so you know something's going on. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's tough, but it, like, it's part of the job. That for sure is not only here for, for many teams, many big teams. You know, they're big teams, spend a lot of money, and they expect results. It's strong. Right. You know? Work working with big men has obviously changed over the years because big men don't have the same role as you and I had back back in the day. Big night, you know, big four or five guys. Now they're extending the floor a little bit more. Yeah, it's just different. Yeah, it's a different game. So how was you were signed to be the big man's coach, but like I said, the game changed right in front of you almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how what do you how do you work with them now? I mean, there's there's certain big men in the league, like you got Malut Malutinoff up there right now that he's never gonna extend the floor on anybody, but he does need a little bit of work, footwork and, and you know, handwork and stuff like that down low. Is that what you're doing? Is that what you're working with? No, you try to teach, you try to show there's different different things on defense. Uh, how to deny the ball and stuff like mm. that, you know, this this, this thing like that, you know. But uh, like I said, I grew up watching uh, Dennis Rodman. Right. And when I was playing, I always wanted to be like him, how to stop players, man. And I think that helped me. And you know, and I try to to this try to show things that I that I used to do when I was playing, you know. God, I mean, the more and more you talk about stopping people, man, the more it makes me <laughs> give me that. All right, let, all right, let me ask you about the one game that, that pretty much everybody remembers, and, and you're obviously coaching. You won, you won. Let, let's go back a second, a step. You won with your the Euro League with Panathinaikos, and you won with Cheska Moscow. Yeah. What what's the difference between winning as a player and winning as a coach? Nah, big difference. I, I it was a big. I felt it was big difference. Because as a player, it was like, wow, I was out there and I was playing, mm -hmm. you know, right. something like, you know, it's, 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 it's different. You know, you, you cr I cried and I was like, I, made, I was surprised. This is something I wanted to do. It was in my, something I wanted so bad, you know, I wanted mm -hmm. to do this for myself. It's like, this was my dream to win a EuroLeague uh, title as a player, you know. Then when I won here, it was good too. It was, for sure it was great, but I felt right. much better for, uh, for Demetrius. I was so happy for him more than me. Right. You know, I, I felt, I felt. You know, because he deserved this. You know, it was it was for him. You know, I I, I appreciate that it was great. I, I'm not not sure a lot of people realize, like you do and I do, that the the amount of time and work and effort that goes into getting down to a single game at the end of the year. You know, or I should say, single two games if you talk about Final yeah, Four, yeah. but it does come down to one game regardless, and 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 just the satisfaction of it as as a player is is more. I think blood, sweat, and tears that, that you, you've given up for the whole season. And as a coach, yeah. it's all that – the time and the mental part of it and, and the thinking. And, and I think there's more of a gratifying feeling as a coach for your players or, like you said, in your, in your case, for Demetrius. Yes, exactly. I, but for, for me, when, I, when we won in uh, – we won, we won that first game in, uh, was against, against Fenerbahce, uh, like I said, it was, it was good to win. I was happy, but I was like uh, – I felt so happy for Demetrius, man, because he it was his first time winning as a coach. It was like right. as a head coach, you know. And I, and I know how much he, he, all the sweat he did, and everything. That was a tough year for us, and it was tough. And uh, we did it, and I, it was good. And I was happy, but I was like I said, I was just happy for him, so happy for him, man. You know, to see him there with his with his family, with the, with the president and the team and everything. 
it was just like I said, different as a player. You know? That was that was just a, a boatload of pressure taken off his shoulders too, because because I think he had lost the year before in the Final Four, right? If, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. you guys. Yeah, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it was to Olympiacos or whatever. Just, and, 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 and to see him out there, it was. It, it, because of the respect I have for him, it, it was really nice to see too. But let's talk about that game for a minute, man. Y'all are up twenty. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are up to. Hey, at least this one's got a good. This one's got a good ending. You know what I mean? You're up twenty yeah. at halftime. You get a miracle, miracle play at the end of the game that <laughs> somehow or another ends up in uh, who's in whose hand in Carapa's hands, right? Yeah. And he he taps it in from about four five about four feet away three four feet away and y'all going to overtime as knowing the what's happened to you guys over the few, last few years you lost you know Cheska lost that final in Turkey yeah, yeah. Um, then y'all lost to Olympiacos a couple more times with nine yeah. point leads at the end of a game against um against Olympiacos what seriously man you're not you're probably the only guy that'll tell me the absolute truth what the hell's going to <laughs> What the hell's going through your mind when you're watching that that lead just dwindle down, knowing that you guys have been through it so many times already? Hey, that was tough, man. We but we knew we playing we playing against uh, Zelko. Come on, I brought it. You know when that halftime he was screaming on those guys' right. butt, man. <laughs> you know it's for sure it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't pretty in there. Those guys came out, they played, man. They they it was like the last game of their life. They played, and I think we we was. You know, we had twenty point lead. You know, we was like, "Oh man, no way to lose this game." You know, but it's yeah, it was ugly. It was scary <laughs> on that bench. I mean, it was <laughs> it was man, it was very nerve wracking, man, sitting there watching that. But I'm mean, like I said, just thank God we won that game. It was tough. It was a nice game to watch. I mean, you got two of the best coaches playing against each other, two best yeah. friends playing against each other. Best it friends. was great. It was a great game. I mean, it was something. It was something for sure. If you was a fan of basketball, that was a great game to watch. You know? Yeah, man, I announced that game, and I, I lost my voice halfway through it. It was, it was, just, it was, you know, when Bobby Dixon started coming out and just draining threes. And but, um, let me ask you one important question. I want, I want your honesty, if I can. If if y'all lose that game, uh, Demetrius just doesn't have a job anymore, does he? Oh no, man! <laughs> Get out of here! Don't ask no questions like that. Man. I don't know about that. <laughs> Come on, man. Come I on, don't you, know, man. I don't know, man. I, you know, you know that's man. a tough organization up there, no matter what, man. And, and, I don't and, know, and, man. <laughs> Who knows, man? <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was sitting there thinking during the game. I'm like, man, I hope, I hope Demetrius and D are gonna be all right, man, because they're about, to, they're about to get the ticket out of Moscow. It's but, so but what, it's what, life, man. what are you doing in, in, as an assistant coach? What are you doing in the game during the game like that? Are you giving? Are you talking to Demetrius? Because you know. I mean, he's a calm, cool guy usually during the game. But you saw during that game, he started to lose a little bit at one Again, moment. You mean the Fenerbahce? Yeah, the Fenerbahce game. Oh, it's normal. I mean, you up 20 and then you lose. For sure, you, you lose it. Yeah. For sure. It's, it's, it's normal, man. You know? And for sure, it's, you just got to keep your players calm. Mm -hmm. and try to, you know, make them relax. Hey, we still got, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes left to play the game. Hey, right. it's, it's going to be tough. For sure. We knew they were going to come back. We knew they were going to make a run. Right, it's course. normal in basketball. They're the best, one of the best teams. They got the best coach. They're not going to just give up. That's that was not going to happen. So we have to. Hey, and, and and what are you saying to Demetrius during during the run? You trying to calm him down at all? You have enough confidence with him during the game to like maybe calm him down at a certain time, or maybe tell him make a, make a change, get this player in. You have that role or not? I think yes. He 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 talks to all of us. He asks us what we think, and I think mm -hmm. it's good. For a coach to to ask the other coaches the opinions, but it always comes down to it doesn't matter what you say. He has the last say, you know. So, right, but you try to yeah. So it's up to him, you know. But it's good to to be able to to say have a say in in the matter sometimes. Now, now let me say let, not, let me talk about the good one. Now, a couple of years later in in Victoria, oh yeah, man, I, I've I've never seen a man that just. There was a coaching cleaner. I mean, it, he was a whole different coach than he was two, three years before that. Yeah. He was he was a whole different coach than he was. I think during that Basconia series that year, you guys learned a lot. I think you lost, lost that first game at home, and then you went to Basconia to the to the the floor that you guys were going to play the championship on, and you won both games. And 
And man, I as I was commentating the games, I'm just like, this is a whole different Demetrius to do this man. He's, <laughs> he's got this game. I mean, I, I have no doubt that they are not going to blow this game. I mean, he's nah. that is his game. And, and for sure, you learn. You learn for sure. You you learn a lot as you go on of your mm-hmm. mistakes, things you do in the past, and you try to correct them. And for sure, he sits there. He he he, he, he all day thinking basketball. So for, for sure, he thought about the things that he could do better in the next Final Four, next game. As always, you think about what you did bad the last game. You right. try to correct it for the next game. You know. Last couple of questions, then we'll get on our, our we'll get on to where we finish. Family wise, you said you have four daughters. Yes. What's the, what's the ages? No, nah, they're thirty. They in the thirties, twenty, late twenties. Yeah, you're like, you're like <laughs> my me, youngest man. one is whose youngest one is twenty, huh? <laughs> twenty. Yeah, yeah. My youngest one's twenty two, and I got I got twenty two, twenty six, and thirty one. So, but but still, you play for twenty five years. How hard is that, you know, being a dad running around all over the place? How much were they with you? Oh, that's tough, man. That's 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 tough. Like you said, I heard it's tough. There's some good things about basketball, some bad things as well. Right. But that's one thing that you can't you can never get back. The time that you miss with your family. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I miss everything. I mean, the the graduations, school, uh holidays. You know uh, everything. It's, it, and it and it and it hurts, man. You you know. But I I put bat. It's kind of bad to say this, but I put basketball first. Right. I always I I want to be bad. I want to be the best player I ever possibly could be. You know right. that's what I wanted. That was my thing. You know made them crazy, like my 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 ex and all that. But that was me. I wanted to be the best. In order for me to be the best, I had to kind of like put them to the side for a bit. Yeah, you know? and it, I missed a lot. It's hard because you know you're dealing with two different things as a, as a professional athlete you're dealing with the dream that you've had from day one uh and trying to fulfill that dream and like you said being the best you can be and being the best you can be takes time away from everything you have to sacrifice because if you didn't sacrifice when you were eight, 15 16 17 18 you would have been doing drugs with everybody else you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and and you have to you have to give that sacrifice and 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 the other issue is that you lose time with your family, you lose time with your wife, you lose time with your kids. And, and there's that balance and you get that, you know, I don't know if you, but I mean, I had the wife that's like, you know, you're never home. You're never home. And I'm like, well, you know, that's, that, that was the life we planned, you know? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and no matter how much you talked about it, it's still, it, it, it's still bothersome years down the road. Cause I missed a lot with my kids too, the same as you did. Uh, I mean, for sure. So, for sure. It, it, how do you get that time back now? I mean, now that they're older, it's even harder to see them now than it is when they were younger, man, because yes, they're yes. moving all over the place. Yes, for sure. Now it's different. Now they're grown and they got their own friends. And so it's hard yeah. to try to make, you know, I got to make appointments. You know, I got to say, <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> I want to see you on this certain day. Yeah? You know, it's different now. So they got their friends and they do their own thing in college and school, university. So it's right. different. It's just now it's even more difficult than before. But you try, I try to talk to them every day on the phone, try to keep right. in touch. I try to do it as best as all I can do, you know, and hopefully in the summer try to do, spend some time with them, you know, whenever I can. How how often do you get to spend time with all of them at once? Wow, oh, it's tough, man. It's tough because they <laughs> some living. It's tough, but I try to bring the one from the states to Spain. Right. They can be with my so it's you know I bring the one from Spain to the states so it's right. just so they can so they can know each other. So yeah. understand. So, so it's just it's like that. So I try. I, I tell my kids all the time. They're like, "When are we all going to be together?" I said, "I said, listen, when the three of when the three of you are all together, it's when I hate you guys the most, <laughs> you know, because y'all just sit around and laugh and joke and nothing serious. You know what I mean? I, 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 I got a better relationship with my kids one on one than when we're all together. But you know, we have a lot of fun. But sometimes it's just annoying, man. It's like, oh, man. I'd rather I love it. I, I love it when we're together. I, I when, we, when we're together, I love it when we're together because I get yeah. to. I act, you know, I act like I'm still 20 sometimes. So I go <laughs> hang out with them, you know, <laughs> go to club, get her. You know? That's exactly what I do, man. I'm out with my kids all the time, man. We're having yeah. drinks and eating dinner and having a good time. I love time. it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. No, no, that's fun. I, mess, I always mess with them. I'm like, man, when the three of you guys are together, man, you just, you, they don't leave me alone, man. They're constantly like, you know, they're busting my chops about this, about that, about being an old man, about this, you know. But, all right, my man, here comes the final two sections. You ready to finish this thing off? Let's go, baby. One of them is a little personality test that we got to get to know a few things about you. And then the other one's our, our year league, our test of your year league knowledge. I'm going to say, if you're anything like me, you're not going to do very well. But 
It's we'll good. I, I will get all. I will get zero. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can. Got, you just don't have to ask me the questions. I already take the zero. We got, <laughs> don't we ask got, me the we, questions. We, we make them easy and the hardest, so you got to do it. I, I think you can score some points. No, I don't one, think so. This one's a personality one. First question. Well, first thing that I have for you: If you got a free trip, a free ticket to go anywhere, any destination in the world, what? Where would it be? Uh, uh, Dominican Republic in the, su- in the southern coast. There's a place out there called, uh, what's the name? I got to this place. Uh, Casa de Campo. It's like Casa a, de Campo, yeah. It's like a millionaire resort. I'm not a millionaire, I'm a thousandaire, but I would love to go there sometime. <laughs> you can still go on vacation. <laughs> it's nice, but it's a nice place to a lot of my friends go there and they send me pictures. It looks nice, it looks great. I just don't have to, never had the time to go. So. All right, last, I know this is a tough one for you because you got a, a screen in front of your face all the time, but last movie you watched? Oh, uh, or last American, series. American Gangster. American Gangster. Denzel Washington, great movie, I love it. Denzel wait, Washington. Wait, wait, hold on a second. That movie's like 30 years old, man. I just watched it. I like watching the old movies. Oh, uh, okay. The old movies are the best. I know, but when did you watch it, though? It's not like you watched watch it. I watched it like uh, a week ago. Oh, okay. All right, good. Are <laughs> <laughs> you crazy, guy? I was, I was going to say, man, like, that's, don't tell me it's the last movie Sorry, you that's, watched. That's not 30 years old, man. What are you talking about, man? Nah, what it, it's got to be like 15 years old, right? All right, maybe 10. All right, we'll look that up. You, yeah, sit, yeah, yeah. you sit down, my man. I'm talking to a guy who owns a restaurant right here knows how to cook. So you sit down at a table, or I should say in your, in your case, if you can make any food that you want to make, in the world, like what's your go-to meal? Seafood, the uh, lobster grill, a grilled seafood platter, man. Lobster, uh, crabs. I love crab claws. Crab, so you, shrimp. So you love going to Galicia then when you're in Spain? Yeah, right? yes. Scallops, <laughs> mussels. That's my meal right there, baby. All right. <laughs> who, who is your childhood idol? I didn't have no idol really. I just. Uh, I will say my 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 older brother probably Saint. I think I looked up to him. He was like the Charles Barkley of the parks. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah. He was he was a beast, you know. And he and everybody was scared of him. He could play. He was tough. You know, I kind of like. I think that's what I got my toughness from from watching him. You know, he yeah. beat you up. Did he beat you up when y'all played together. Yes, for the first two years, and then after that, I I was the man. <laughs> <laughs> By my. <laughs> But tell him I don't like tell him I don't like him very much. He taught you too much. All right, man. So tell the the one game that you'd love to go back in time and replay if you can. Uh, uh Cup of the Array, the King's Cup in Spain. When we played against Manresa and we lost uh in the last seconds of the game. I got cut in the face last second of the play and the referee didn't call the foul. <laughs> and we <laughs> lost that game. That was the only thing I never won in Spain with the Cup of the Array. That game. Oh, that's hey, that's one thing we got in common, man. All the time, I never won that one either. Oh, <laughs> that's the only thing I didn't win. I yeah. told that I tell everybody, man. I would I would literally, and this is this is a good analogy of what you've already talked about. I would literally give up my sixty three point game in Bologna for that damn cup, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, the only thing I didn't win. Yeah, and I get all kinds of great press for the sixty-three point the sixty-three point game. I still live off of that game sometimes, <laughs> but I, I I give it all away for that damn championship, man. I never yeah, won. Yeah, I missed it. It's the only thing I didn't get, man. I got everything but that. Oh, that's the one thing. It's, it's hard. It's hard for someone to play in Real Madrid and Barcelona for a few years and not win that thing. You yeah. know, I thought I, I thought I was the only one to accomplish that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. I think we hit it throughout your throughout the interview. But top three Euroleague memories. Man, when we won in Bologna and uh, against Fenerbahce, and uh, the last one we won in Basconia. Yeah, that was that was wait, that was an easy question for you right there. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hey, if, if if this stops one day and you decide that you're just done with basketball and, and want to walk away and get get it over with, what are you gonna do? Like I tell you, just to disappear with my kids, man. Just go spend the rest of my my days with the kids, man. Mm-hmm. Spend the rest of my life with them. And enjoy it, man. But that's it, you know. So when you when so that's not fair to the kids, man. When you're all old and decrepit, you're gonna be there to have them taking care of you, right? That's right. That's the key. That's why you got girls. That's girls it, yeah. are the key. Man, I don't <laughs> hey, I don't know. I got one girl. Look at my gray hair, man. You got four girls, but you never had any hair anyways. It didn't really yeah, matter. But right. all right, man. Here comes the hardest part. You ready? We're gonna get we're gonna get this I one. I told you. Quick. You might want to give me the, 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 the no, zero. No, no. no, I guarantee you, I guarantee you're gonna get at least one of them. All right. You got it's, it goes from easiest to toughest. There's five questions. First question is worth 10 points. Second, 20. 
third, 30, fourth, 40, fifth, 50, all right? Here we go, you ready? I'm ready, I'm nervous, but okay. Yeah, the one that's making me nervous is this first one, but you, I'm hoping you know this. Who is the actual coach of Savannah Vezda? Oh, <laughs> you crazy. Don't do me like that, man. I just, and I was just reading it today. <laughs> oh, you gotta be joking me, man. Hey, I'm, I'll be honest with you. The only reason why I would have known this is because I just did the game last night, the, the makeup game. And I was just looking at it today, man. God. And I like, I was just looking at the, the, the thing today, the stats today, man. I cannot even think who that guy was. Mama, give me the zero, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, you didn't get the 10 points. It's Dayan Radonich. 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 Two teams, number two, question number two. The two teams that have won more EuroLeague titles than any other, which are they? And I'm talking, we're talking EuroLeague. We're talking 2000, the new EuroLeague. Uh, I would say Pente Michael. And one other team? Oh, come on, man. Yeah. I said the two uh, teams that have uh, won. Think, think, come on, man. That's my team. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I got I 10. That's no, 20 you got, points. No, no, you got 20. You got 20. All right, here we go. You might even get this one. In which team did Milos Teodosic make his EuroLeague debut? Olympiakos. Yeah, my boy's got 50 points. <laughs> See, this is like your attitude, man. You didn't know until you tried. You didn't know you were going to be so good at basketball. <laughs> Who's the shot block leader of the competition at the end of the 2017-2018 EuroLeague season? Uh, I'm, I'm, I was going to say Tavares. <laughs> oh, man, you missed by one. He, it was Bryant, Bryant Dudston with... Dunstan with 30 blocks. Tavares and, and Tibor Place were second with 29. <sighs> All right. Now you got your last one for 50 points. What do you uh -oh. got? You got, you, you got 50 points. You can get 100 right now and be our, be our crossover leader here if you get this one. How many teams has Ergen Adaman coached in the EuroLeague? Teams that eventually played in the EuroLeague, but not in the year that Adaman coached them don't count is what they're telling me. Those are the questions. So how many teams that Ergman, Adam, and Coach in the EuroLeague? Teams that have eventually played in the EuroLeague but not in the year that Adam and Coach them don't count. Two. No, five. <laughs> Manto, Manto Pashi, Fenerbahce, Forte Duda, Bologna, uh, Anadula oh, Efes, yes. and Galatasaray. Oh, okay. Hey man, and I'm gonna tell you what, 50 points is not bad. And you and you were you were one block shot away from you were one block shot away of scoring 90. Oh. <laughs> My man D, it's been it's been what like 30 years for you and I since we first yes. like said we first met in that summer league tournament game and 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 I apologize I never got to pay you that dinner, but I will make it it's up for you. Okay. I, I I got your number now. So when you come to when you come to Madrid, that's the first thing we're gonna do that night. We're gonna meet up, we're gonna go for dinner, but Man, like I said before, it was it, it was a pleasure playing against you. It was a pleasure getting to know you. It was, it was I thank you for making me a better player, man, because every day I played against you, man, you made it so difficult for me that every time I left the game against Barcelona, it just seemed so much easier when I played against other teams <laughs> when you weren't around. But I bust your chops about it and I laugh about it. And, and, and I know you beat me up pretty bad. And a lot of times I wake up in the morning, I think about you still beat me up, man, back in the day. But... <laughs> It, it was just, it was a pleasure to play against you. It was even more of a pleasure to have you on the show, man. And I appreciate your time and, and no, everything. No, thank you. No, thank you. It was great. Thank you very much, man. It was great playing against you too, man. I told you why, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> and, 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 t and tell your brother, I don't like him now that, now that I know that he's the reason why you beat everybody up. If you'd have just been a scorer, you'd have been a lot easier to play against. Yes. All right. <laughs> My man, thanks for being on the crossover, man. I'll see you All soon. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me, Joe. All right, thank big you. D. Later. All right, all right.